We've been watching the restaurants closely this earnings season to gauge the strength of the consumer. But while most restaurant stocks roared early this year and then have pulled back lately in response to the rebounding price of oil, I can think of one name that's lagged the group, although it's showing signs of stabilizing, perhaps bottoming lately. I'm talking about Del Frisco's restaurant group, which is DFRG, which runs three high-end steakhouse chains, Del Frisco's Double Eagle Steakhouse, Del Frisco's Grill, and Sullivan Steakhouse, with 46 locations across 20 states. For the last few months, Del Frisco's has basically been flatlining around the $20 level, where it is right now, around 3 bucks above its 52-week low. But the company has steady organic growth story as it expands its store account across the country, and the stock is fairly inexpensive. It gives you a 20% long-term growth rate. Now, Del Frisco's reported this Wednesday, and while the company posted a two-cent earnings beat off a 21-cent basis, some people think its revenues came in a bit light, rising 12.7% year-over-year, with slow but steady 2.2% same-store sales growth, and expanding gross margins up 130 basis points year-over-year. Stocks sold off roughly 3% on the news, but I think that's just because it had run up a bit into the quarter, uh, because there was nothing here particularly worrisome at all, although maybe some people weren't inspired by it. So can Del Frisco get its groove back? Let's take a closer look with Mark Bendansky. He's the CEO of Del Frisco's Restaurant Group. Learn more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Ben Nancy, welcome back to Man Money. Jim, a pleasure to be back here. All right, I got to tell you, pound for pound, I think your place is the best. And I love it. And I go to wherever it is in any city that I'm at. There you go. At what point do you decide, you know what, we're not getting the respect we deserve, like Morton's used to tell me. Right. And we don't need to do this pop up. We don't need to be public. Because I don't get the price of your stock. I just don't get it. Yeah, well, you know, I don't decide what the stock price I is going to be. But... I tell you what, you hit on it, Jim, exactly how we feel. We think we're a great value. We think we're, we, we pose a great upside. We're a growth company that grows at 15%. We're growing our EBITDA 15 to 18%. We have a lot of white space. We have a ton of regular fans who are devoted to our three brands. So we think there's a great upside, and it's still a great story with DFRG. Now, I know you're, going, you're emphasizing the grill, which is absolutely terrific, and I love them. But why, why that? Because, geez, this, you know, these other places, they have a little bit, the other ones have a little bit better same-store sales, and I, I can't imagine you saturated this country with, with Del Frisco's Double Eagles yet. Well, we have it, and we're still growing uh, the Double Eagle. We're going to open one this year. We'll open one or two next year, and we're going to expand okay. as we go. But with the grill, let me tell you, the same-store sales were negative, 3%, 3.5% for Q1. Six stores were in the comp unit for most of the quarter. That's it, out of the 16. At the, by the end of the quarter, we had seven. So we're talking about a small amount of stores that are in the comp base. We saw it start, well, uh, P1, the very beginning. Right. We were positive across the board. Mm -hmm. Had a rough P2 and P3. But if you take out two stores, we were positive for the quarter. We're opening new stores that are doing very, very well. We have a great pipeline for this year and beyond. So we don't think there's something wrong with the concept. We just think we need to keep moving, going through our initiatives, and we'll be fine. Well, one of the things I love is the millennials love. Yeah. Now, why can't you put more up, say, uh, near colleges, where yeah. there are yeah. people who, need, who have student debt? That's but right. there's also, I mean, there's a, there's, an, uh, there's a group of people who want to take, have a date. That's true. And I think the grill is the ultimate date place for people in their 20s. Yeah, I love that. And people who have debt sometimes have more debt. So we're okay with that, too. <laughs> but you know what? The grill is a combination of a restaurant that's good for Gen X. Everyone's forgotten Gen X, Jim. Right, you're absolutely right. Everyone's yeah, I, forgotten I, Gen X. And, and that was the original point of building the grill. Be there for Gen X. Right. And then when they grow, they can go transition to steakhouses. But we wanted to create a concept that it also is good for millennials. And we think we have that. Yeah, you definitely do. Now, uh, People feel a little more robust. There's a lot more employment. Right. Uh, things are getting better. But at the same time, we know that food costs have gone up. So mm -hmm. how do things shake out between the, mm -hmm. the uh, amount of traffic, which is good, right. and the expense of the food itself? Well, I tell you what, that's one thing is the strength of this company is our controls. And that's basically is we have the best team in baseball, all of our chefs and our general managers who do such an exceptional job every day. But meat only accounts for 33% of our cost. Right. So we're not... We're, we're, we're not into the commodity basket in one specific era. If you look at our cost, you'll see tight controls throughout the history of this company. First quarter, we were down, you know, 130 basis points from last year without any significant price increase. Okay. Uh, also, are you how lever are you guys to gasoline? Because you know, the the six to nine dollar right. guys are right. very much affected. Very by much gasoline. so. Uh, not us. Yeah. Historically, steakhouses, not, not whatsoever. And the grill hasn't hurt us or helped us when it goes up or down. 
Mark, I got to tell you, honestly, it's, it's a conundrum for me. And, uh, but it, look, I guess maybe because I'm a customer and I just love it, I, I think the stock should be higher. Well, there's a lot of people who think your way, and we're going to prove it. We'll prove you all I right. I bet you will. We will. If, thank you so much. That's Thanks, Mark Bednarski. He's the CEO of Del Frisco's Restaurant Group, which I think may be one of the biggest bargains in the whole sector. That money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.